Other than the giant keel timber years ago, Steve hasn't purchased any lumber that would end up part of Arabella. All of it was harvested from on or near the family farm, or salvaged from Victoria. But that streak ends this week with one trip to the lumber yard to replace the broken mizzen boom. So we have learned two things, really, living on the boat in the winter and using the propane stove. One is pretty important, and that is the burning propane from the burners in the top of the stove and the broiler in the oven. In the summer, it's not an issue because the portholes are open, but in the winter, the carbon monoxide detectors go off, and that is bad. And the second thing, which is super annoying and it drives Akiva crazy, is if we cook anything that smokes even the tiniest, littlest bit, it sets off the smoke detectors. It's just such a small space in here, and the ceiling's so low that it really doesn't take a lot, and that's pretty annoying. And Akiva has begun to associate us cooking with the alarm going off. So if we fire this up, he starts pacing and whining and getting all stressed out, uh, which isn't good for him, it isn't good for us. Uh, so we need uh, some exhaust here, and this is something that I had thought about from time to time when we were installing the stove and doing the galley, and uh, I kind of wish that I had paid it a little more attention. But thankfully, we pulled the wood stove out, and we have <clears throat> an exhaust vent here already, and we have a bunch of stove pipe. And then I have a three inch inline bilge blower here. So I'm thinking, if we mount that there for now and get that wired up and see if just sucking from here is enough to get those fumes or if we need to kind of put a nozzle down. I really don't want to lower this overhead here anymore and this might do the trick, but we will see. Now we need to connect some power. But I got this wired up, I turned it on, and a minute later, the entire saloon was filled with diesel smoke and the smoke detectors were going off. And it took me a few minutes to figure out what the heck was going on. So what I want is for you to watch the diesel heater, take note of what that flame looks like, and I'm gonna turn this on. Just watch that flame. Did you see that? I'll do it again. Watch real carefully. It doesn't take long. So what I believe is happening <laughs> is that we have one air inlet in the saloon area here, and we have another air inlet over on the forward end of the house. This blower is sucking so much air out of the boat and sending it up that it's reversing the draft on the diesel heater and it's actually sucking air down through the diesel heater and that's making that fire go out and burn all funky and filling the saloon with smoke. Uh, but if we crack a porthole just a little bit and turn it on, everything's fine. We have enough fresh air coming in that we're not basically turning the boat into a vacuum. Um, so I have pretty high hopes for how much air that's gonna remove and now we just need to cook something smoky in the next few days and uh, crack a porthole and see if that works and doesn't set off the smoke detectors and the CO2 detectors. And I know that will make me happy, it'll make Robin happy and most importantly of all, that will make Akiva very happy. If something's interfering with your happiness, it might be time to give BetterHelp a try. And we're happy again to have BetterHelp as a sponsor for this week's episode. BetterHelp's been very helpful um, for me with everything going on with my mom. So if you're not familiar with BetterHelp, they help pair people with licensed therapists. So if that's something that you are interested in, uh, you can go do a questionnaire, and most people are paired with a therapist within 48 hours. Most people I know that have done it have, have gone through a couple folks before they find one that they, they really jive with. And BetterHelp makes all of that really easy to do. 
So for us, we're here on the boat in Harwich Port. We're with my mom and my sister in Boston. We're with my mom out in Western Mass. Finding that time and that space uh, to talk with someone can be challenging and better helps really great with that. We can talk, we can even text if we have to. So no matter where we are and no matter how chaotic things may be, we can communicate with our therapists and have a session and it's been really helpful just to just to have somebody to to talk to and vent to and and work through this this process with my mom. If you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com front slash acorn. By clicking that link, you're helping out the channel and it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. A few episodes back, Arabella's mizzen boom broke on the trip to Harwich Port. With Robin's dad's shop a short distance away, it was the perfect time to head to the lumber yard for some Douglas fir to make a permanent replacement. No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> of course you want the one on the bottom. <laughs> So see how this runs this way? Mm -hmm. And see how this runs this way? Mm -hmm. So that's quarter sun. Okay. This is what we want. It's more stable. Okay. Um, but you can see how big the rings are on this one mm -hmm. and how porous the end is. Yep. This was grown fast. And see how this one looks so much tighter? Mm -hmm. This one was grown slower. Each one of these is a year. Mm -hmm. Look how much tighter they are. Oh yeah. On this one, on this one. So this was really nice slow grown. So we've got one knot, but it's on the edge and it's gone. So okay. nothing to worry about. If we glue this up and put this on the outside of the lamination, that'll disappear. And then this one's got a little sapwood on the edge, but I'm gonna cut a strip like that and a strip like that and glue them together and we'll have a little bit extra. But we'll be able to avoid that strip of sapwood Oh, there's a big one up there. Oh, I might have to pick a different one. Oh, because of that. I didn't see that. That's a big dead knot. And I don't have the length to avoid it. Mm. How deep do you think it goes? Your guess is as good as mine. Your guess is better than mine. <laughs> Yeah. Now there's no knots. Just a little bit of sapwood, but dodge that no problem. All right, go buy the first wood for the boat that I've had to buy. <laughs> oh, painful. So I got two by sixes by 14. So they are a little bit longer uh, and a little bit wider than we need and they're dimensional lumber. So they're actually one and three quarters by like five and a half. Uh, so we will glue two of those strips together and that'll make up the mizzen boom. So got our slip here and for two by six by 14 vertical grain fur, uh, we came out to a total of uh, just under $200, 190 .91. So not cheap. I can't imagine buying all the lumber to make the mass, never mind, <laughs> to make this little boom. And we've had a couple offers from folks 
uh, with fur and um, they've offered to you know get it and bring it out and help us out with that uh, and I really appreciate that I even went down kind of the roads of starting that process but since we have the sales off it makes time it makes sense to redo the mizzen now and for 200 bucks you know it's it's not inexpensive but it's not really worth having somebody dig things out and drive them all the way out here uh, when we can just go and procure it Sometimes, not always, if you go to a smaller lumber yard and tell them what you're doing and specifically why you need what you need, uh, sometimes they're kind enough to let you dig through the pile as long as you leave them the way you found it. Uh, and that was the case at this yard, which was really nice. It's one thing to order, you know, vertical grain, fur. It's another to be able to look through that stack of vertical grain and pick the one that's the tight rings and the older growth and make sure it's clear. And that's what we were able to do at the yard today. So this is going to get delivered to Robin's dad's mill shop. And we're going to head over there. And uh, hopefully this weekend we'll get these sticks glued up. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you, Don? I'm good. Are you interrupting me? No, I was just about to whip up some stuff. So if you're going to come come and do the shop this weekend. Okay. Around, yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Good enough that I think we can rip it a little wide and glue it. By the time Trim you glue it, it up and shape it and everything, if as long as it's close, I don't yeah. think it will make too much difference. If they were bowed, I was going to want to put the bowed tips together so they were sprung in the middle yeah. and clamp them together mm -hmm. that way. Um, but these seem straight enough not to have to even worry about it. So we can really just focus on defects and grain orientation. So I'm going to take out my straight blade and I'm going to replace it with my toothing blade. It's got all of these grooves machined into the back of it. And you sharpen it just like a normal chisel, but you can see it gives you this little square pattern. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of stuff we're trying to get rid of. You're going to be cutting off a few inches off the end, aren't you? We will, but, you know, through the length of the board, this is the kind of stuff oh, we're yeah. trying to get rid of, because that's dusty and dirty, Yeah. and the epoxy's not going to stick. Like you said, at the end of the board, it's not as big of a deal. Like if you have nice planed oak, you'll see the striations yeah. of all the teeth but you can't really see it in the fur. You can feel it though. You can feel the texture to it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so a couple, few more of these. We can lay these. I have. They might be different thicknesses, but I have these down here too. Well, these would be nice because these are all the same thickness. Okay. And if we get them covered in glue, I'm not worried about yeah. messing your stuff up. This is all sapwood anyways. So we're going to go all the way down and then come back up. Now you're going to cut this thing in half. You ready? Oh, I... Yeah, there you go. You didn't cut it all the way. Okay. 
There you go. Liam's my nephew, and it's my sister. All right, Liam, if I pick up the ends of these, can you put these boards underneath, evenly spaced out underneath them? And you bring them to the edge of the table right in front of you? OK, hold on. I got to switch what? these and not bonk Robin. OK. This? Yep, that one. Is it OK if he potentially gets epoxy in any of these clothes? What we're going to do here, Liam, is I'm going to walk down. I'm going to dribble epoxy down like that. And what I want you to do is take, yeah, that scraper or this one, it doesn't matter. And I want you to just spread it out so that the whole surface is nice and wet. But what I don't want you to do is this and send a whole bunch of it running down the edge. We want to keep it all on the top, nice and neat as we can. But we want the whole top to get nice and wet. Does that make sense? And if anybody else wants to grab a scraper or a popsicle stick and jump in on this task, feel free. So is this basically as a primer and you're going to go back over it with a thickener? Yep, exactly. So yeah, this is the wet out. Well, that was sooner than I thought. No worries. Yep, acorn to arabella at gmail.com. Oh, no worries. No need to apologize. Thank you so much. You too. Bye. Yep, try to keep as much of it as you can on the top. All right, don't push it off the edge. All right, let me see this. And we're gonna tip them towards each other. And then we're gonna start, flip it on its side. There we go. And then out towards the edge a little more. Okay, and now what we wanna do is just very lightly start putting clamps on it. What you're gonna to wanna to do is put a clamp in and you squeeze. Now this is really important, you watch that gap. See how that epoxy starts to, start to run out of it like that? Yeah. That's all we want to do. Stop there. All right, Liam, so now the next task, if you got gloves on, is to grab one of these scrapers and scrape as much of the epoxy that's coming out and just wipe it onto the plastic. And that way, when we go to do cleanup later, it's not as difficult. And basically, yeah, exactly. We just want it to be smooth, and that way we can run it through the planer. That's fine. Yeah, and then the top, too. And I'm going to come behind you with a rag and see if I can smooth it out even more.
fresh air. He's greedy slash stressed. Let's see. It's not quiet, but it's better than the smoke detector. 